Hello, and welcome to a new episode of the Minor Issues Podcast. I'm Mark Thornton at the Mises Institute. Technological unemployment in economics is an official term that refers to the unemployment of skilled workers that results from technological improvements. The classic example is the people who made buggy whips used by the operator of horse-drawn carriages to communicate with the horses, a very important innovation of those times. This is considered technological unemployment to be generally a good type of unemployment from an objective point of view. Today, I'm interested in a different type of technological unemployment, as in unemployment in today's highest tech industries. Although some of the people losing their jobs this coming year may have to retool their skills before they find new employment. With Mises University over and the stock market showing its first crack in its armor, it's time to check the underbelly of the economy's mighty growth industries. I usually do a good amount of research for my podcast, examining the headline news, academic sources, and a good number of social media and podcasts for opinions, sources, data, and evidence. However, for this episode, my first source provided all the information I really needed. For today's episode, I found an excellent new source on my very first click, a dynamic and hilarious podcaster that seems to specialize in financial data analysis and dissection. His name is Patrick Boyle, and his podcast, Big Tech Doesn't Want You Anymore, just dropped a few days ago. I will give you a quick synopsis here, but my purpose is theoretical. How does the data fit so far with our understanding of business cycle theory that we have learned from Ludwig von Mises, F.A. Hayek, who was given a Nobel Prize for his elaborations on Mises' theory, and Murray Rothbard, the economist who best explained the theory using real-world data. We also have a extra special silver lining to explain at the end of this episode that blows the top off our future. Patrick Boyle recounts how big tech firms took advantage of the pandemic conditions which drove people from their normal life to an online existence and how that created a tidal wave of revenues for big tech. Importantly, at the same time, the Federal Reserve's ultra-cheap credit policy infected our economy in general, and big tech in particular, with various harebrained investments an all-out hiring binge, including a big boom in DEI hiring. That initial boom in hiring quickly soured with a return to normal conditions and a renormalization of big tech employment with the spread of layoffs during 2022 and 2023, especially in the DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion areas. Patrick correctly focuses on the cyclical nature of technology, including labor. In the recent layoffs, non-specific workers, such as those in human resources, have been better able to find new jobs, but specific workers, such as coders and developers, have had a tough time finding new jobs, especially at their previous inflated pay levels. This is what theory explains and expects. Excesses in money and credit lead to cycles in investment and employment, especially pronounced in capital-intensive businesses involving advanced technologies. The layoffs and slowdowns in hiring continue. You may have noticed that big tech insiders have been selling their option-based shares in the companies and that Warren Buffett has sold a big chunk of the Apple shares that he controls. At the same time, they are spending extraordinarily on investments in artificial intelligence. We have previously argued that, yes, artificial intelligence will be a boon for the future. 
But that's really just the next step in technological development. In the current stock market, investors seeking returns have been lured by the prospects of AI and bid up shares, indicating that they will personally receive all of the value from this new advanced technology in terms of higher prices for their shares. In reality, it will be more likely that consumers and direct users of technology will benefit the most. If this reality commences, big tech companies may suffer revenue disappointments and cost overruns and be forced to spend more attempting to reinforce their share prices. This might mean rethinking their investments and getting more rigorous with hiring, firing, and compensation policies in general. The silver lining of hitting this wall of reality could very well be widespread layoffs in the technological sectors, as the Austrian business cycle theory would expect. It's not that I want people to lose their jobs. It's just the upside I see in a large number of young, talented, and likely underutilized and underappreciated people being let loose into the job market full of ideas and ambition. What I suspect they will find is a lower wage environment for talent and other forms of labor, lower prices for real estate, lower prices for support services, and a great deal more mobility in terms of labor and capital. If you look at the titans of tech in the 1990s, such as IBM, Dell, Yahoo, etc., you will see that they either fell behind, reinvented themselves, or thrived on some sort of government handouts. Microsoft, for example, would not have ever thrived if not for its government patents on the dominant computer operating system. In the aftermath of the tech bubble, new firms arose from the ashes and survived and thrived with new ideas, new products, and new technologies because of these low costs and sometimes secret government subsidies, such as with the case of Gargoyle. I have a chapter in my Skyscraper Curse book reviewing all those who predicted the tech stock bubble bust a quarter of a century ago. And I also include all those who had absolutely no clue and were just true believers in advanced technology and the wonders of the Federal Reserve. <laughs>